Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Are you ready to hear a real English conversation? Let's get started. Today I have something super special to share with you. I met an interesting woman whose family runs a salt business. Yes, salt. You're going to meet Carla and hear how her family started the salt business three generations ago. You'll also learn some differences in different types of salt and just some interesting insight into something that every human needs but we don't often think about. I'm sure that you also have things that you're passionate about, so it's a good chance to listen to our conversation and try to imitate the way that we speak. Throughout this conversation, you're going to see subtitles down here. That's going to show some vocabulary, phrasal verbs, and important pronunciation that we're going to talk about after the conversation lesson. Because after the conversation lesson with Carla, you're going to hear a vocabulary lesson between my husband Dan and I where we're going to explain some important vocabulary expressions that you heard in the conversation with Carla. I hope that you're going to be able to remember these expressions a little bit better because we're having a natural conversation about those expressions. Then you'll have a grammar lesson where we focus on some important phrasal verbs that you heard in the conversation with Carla. And finally, at the end, we'll have a pronunciation lesson where we'll focus on some important sentences that you heard in the conversation and how you can accurately pronounce those yourself to try to speak as naturally as possible. This is a pretty big lesson. There's a lot going on. We've got the conversation, vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. So you can always click on CC, which is the subtitles, so that you can catch every word that we talk about. If you enjoy this lesson, I hope that you can join me in the Fearless Fluency Club, where you'll get a lesson set like this every month. Today, you're only going to see a little bit less than half of one lesson set, but each month I send you a new lesson set, a full one, where you can learn about new topics, vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and practice using this conversation skills yourself. All right, let's go meet Carla. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Carla. And Carla has a quite interesting family business to share with us. I've got some visual aids as well, but I'll let you explain what do you say you do or what would you say your family does? How would you describe it? Sure. I am third generation in a sea salt family business. Okay. My grandfather back in the 70s was the first to start importing sea salt from out of the country. Mm. He brought it over in suitcases and he didn't know how much to charge. He was like, I don't know, I'll bag it up and give me five dollars. So, uh -huh. And that's kind of set the price for the next 30 years. We just kept it there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so he just thought, oh, people will buy this. That's cool. Yeah. Was he doing that? back home or no so he is from uh, Belgium original or he was he okay. passed away but he um, yeah he was best friends with Michio Kushi who was the person that brought macrobiotics into the United States oh, okay and Michio told him you need to bring sea salt into this country because there's going to be a shortage of minerals at some point and oh. they're going to need this so my grandfather traveled all over Europe trying to find the most clean most high mineral sea salt he could find, which he settled into the coast of Brittany, France in this little town called Guéron. Okay. And um, they do this ancient harvesting technique that was originated by the Celts. Okay, so that's where this originated, yes. the name. Well, they think, they think that it was from the Celts um, that originally did it, but then studies have shown that it dates back even further with this harvesting technique in uh, Asia. Wow. Which, you know, they, they're always doing something before sure. the rest of us. Um, so instead of boiling the water and boiling to, to evaporate it and, and using up all the valuable wood that they needed for other things back then, they realized that they needed to create these ponds using these clay beds okay. and let the sun and the wind do the evaporation for them. Nice. So this started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and it's still there today. Wow, yeah. it's it's incredible that they had the thought process to say we need to save wood. Let's use what right. we've got, nature, right. the sun, right, <laughs> to be able to do that. So at this point, are the origins of the salt still in that area? So we um, import from all over the world, cool. and we have found some really fascinating 
um, high-tech ways that they're still susta um, sustainably harvesting mm -hmm. and producing all different kinds of salts with different mineral compositions. Yeah, so I'd love to hear more about that in detail. Yeah. <laughs> I want to show them the salt that you brought. Sure. Is this available internationally? It is. Okay, so yeah. maybe they've seen this. Is it mainly in Europe or could uh, be anywhere? Parts of Europe. We're also in Malaysia, Australia. Okay. Uh, we were working on China a few years ago, but um, they have a lot of laws around it with it having to be iodized. Oh. They've lifted that since, but it's a huge investment to, as you can imagine, to tackle yeah. that kind of distribution. And we're still a family-owned company. We've never had investors. Everything has wow. been grassroots grown. Wow. Yeah. That's really amazing. So if you see this, this brand, the Celtic Sea Salt, I'll put links to all the websites okay. and so they can <laughs> check it out. But if you see that... That's the company you're yeah. talking about. And this one you said is, or this one's the fine ground, regular kind of white, what you kind of recognize as salt. Right. But there's also other ones. Right. Like so the light brought. gray are these uh, in these grinders, which this is the same salt, but they just stone grind that for you for convenience. Okay. They didn't really have that available before we kind of started demanding it from our providers, saying mm -hmm. that, you know, the Americans really want their shakers. They don't do the European way of grinding or pinching their salt. Oh, gotcha. So we're the ones that brought the fine ground here, yeah. So that is a cultural thing. I guess it depends on what kind of what your mm -hmm. family's used to using. Exactly. But just shaking it, especially at a restaurant, that's really common. Yeah. This is more a European type style. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. it, <is. laughs> it probably has some steam in Asheville though, I imagine. Oh yeah. People like, some people they're like, oh, you know, I like to pinch it. No, I like to grind it. No, I like to shake it. So uh -huh. it's kind of a funny little question we have at shows and stuff. Oh, how do you like to serve your salt? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit about the different types of salt and I am quite ignorant about that, except sure. for just hearsay that I've heard. Yeah. And of course, what you see, different colors and whatnot. So. Yeah, I mean, salt, I mean, it, it can be an endless topic. There's so many different kinds, everything from um, mass industrial salt that we use, that you see like in the Morton shaker that has been highly processed and things added and removed and anti-caking agents mm. um, for our table salt. Um, they originally started putting iodine into the salt to help with a goiter issue a long time ago, which it did help, but the iodine actually caused a discoloration to the salt, so they had to bleach it. Oh, interesting. Okay. The bleaching caused it to be bitter, so they had to sweeten it, so they added dextrose, which caused it to be sticky so it wouldn't shake out of the jar, so they <laughs> added anti-caking agent chemicals. One thing on top of another. <laughs> So what we have kind of come to terms with is we've realized, you know, the salt is actually perfect in its own way. Mm. And um, yes, there is an iodine deficiency, which we created a seaweed seasoning to help with that. Oh, interesting. Because there was a demand, people asking for us to put iodine in our salt. Oh. But because of all those complications, we were like, you know, let's leave our salt alone, mm. keep it in its whole form that the body knows what to do with. Mm. And then we offered a, a seaweed seasoning. Um, but you'll see all different colors, and all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. Um, okay. We even have a super white, white salt from Hawaii that is super white because it comes from 2,000 feet under the surface of the water at the base of a volcano. Whoa, how, how did someone find that? <laughs> well, you know, people know us in the industry as, you know, we, we kind of have figured out ways to launch these amazing commodities into the U.S. market. And the U.S. market's one of the hardest ones to tap into. Really? Yeah, um, when you're ex ex uh, importing from other countries. Okay. So a lot of people write us letters and send us samples. We get dozens a month. Wow, saying, so can you please yes. let us be part of this? And that was just one that somebody came to us at a trade show and said, you gotta check this salt out. And, <laughs> and it's an amazing salt. It's beautiful and it's clean and it, it um, has a great source of potassium and calcium. Okay, so I'm curious when you say that it's great and it's clean, does that affect the taste of it? Because yes. there's this term of, oh, it's salty. It tastes like salt. But right. Is there a difference? <laughs> there is, and you'll start to notice, once you start to taste different salts side by side, you'll start to go, oh wow, I can taste that this one's a little more bitter, this one's a little more like, um, has a saline taste. Like, when you taste oysters, mm -hmm. some people go, it's just slimy. Yeah. But when you become create a palate for it, you go, oh, this is more briny, or this one tastes more fresh, or you know, you start to kind of compare, same with wine, or beer, or mm -hmm. um, cheeses, you know, you just start to understand different notes. 
um, a higher sodium content, you're going to have more of a bitter taste. With higher minerals such as magnesium, potassium, and um, calcium, you're having a little more milder taste, almost like an ocean flavor. Okay. And it naturally enhances the, fla the flavor of your food as opposed to just making it salty. Oh, gotcha. So it's really going to work with the things that you're putting it on right. in a different way. I'm really curious now after this to taste this side right. by side with what I've got at home and if I have any different types at home Yes. to see. And the key with salt tasting is you want to start off with the highest mineral content salt going to the highest sodium salt because okay. um, once your taste buds have been triggered in their bitter and sodium <laughs> levels, uh -huh. you can't taste the difference of the other things. Gotcha. So you got to kind of work your way up. I used to host salt parties um, <laughs> wow. in California. Yeah. I would love to go to that. <laughs> yeah. It was so much fun. We made like cocktails and... Um, yeah, what do you do at a salt party? <laughs> yeah, well, it's a lot of drinks. Okay, so, it's so like you put them on the rim? On the rim. Okay. And um, I did a lot of like, uh, you know, things that edamame with salt on it or, you know, fun things where you would need the salt on it. And, mm -hmm. then, um, and then we did a salt tasting where I would show people how to kind of taste the different notes of salt and the textures. The education part of it. Because mm -hmm. it's not just, like you said, it tastes salty, but it could actually bring out other flavor right. notes in the food. Even the shape of the crystals will cause a different kind of where is it going to burst in your mouth? How is it going to break down in your mouth? Like these crystals are very coarse. Uh, so yeah. some people are a little bit, um, you know, they need it to be ground up because it's strong. Whereas a flake salt, which we offer as well, mm -hmm. kind of dissipates in your mouth and it's not as like potent. Okay, and that's actually flat yeah. flakes of salt. Okay, I, I feel like I've seen that in a picture before, but I've never bought flake salt before. Yeah. Do people add that when they're cooking, or is that more for like Garnishing. A, a garnish to look at the you nice can. shape? <laughs> yeah, I mean, cooking is fine with it, but I mean, some people spend a lot of money on salt, so, uh -uh. <laughs> so some salts you only use for garnishment or finishing the salt. Okay. Like this is a great cooking salt because it's got the coarse crystals and it dissolves nicely into liquids and heat. Okay. Um, and it's cheaper, so you know, you don't want to put a handful of Pot in your pasta water of the flakes expensive salt. <laughs> it's expensive, right? Yeah. So would the flavor of, for example, this is fine ground. Right. If I had this in a a coarser version, mm -hmm. would it taste different, or what would the experience be like? To it's actually that? really interesting um, because even though these are the same salts, mm -hmm. it's just this one ground up. Okay. This one tastes a little different. Um, what we have found is part of what makes the minerals higher in, in the salts that we have offered is the, the moisture. Oh. So when you grind it and you lose its little crystal box encapsulation mm -hmm. that holds the brine, the uh -huh. liquid, you lose a little bit of the minerals so you have a higher sodium. So this does have a slightly higher sodium than than the crystals, so okay. you have a little more of a bitter taste. So there's something that's moisture inside, the brine is inside the little crystal itself. Mm -hmm. This seems quite scientific. <laughs> it is, yeah. We've worked with lots of scientists and doctors over the years, yeah. over 600 actually, Whoa. that endorse our salt, that have seen the difference firsthand with their patients. And oh, yeah, tell me about that health benefits or the difference in health, because there's a lot of problems right. with too much salt nowadays. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. Sodium is something that is 100% needed in the body, no matter okay. what. We lose it constantly through sweat, tears, and going to the bathroom. Uh -huh. um, so we have to replenish it in a way that the body knows how to get it back as, um, in our body in a, in a way that can be assimilated. Mm -hmm. The body has a, it's kind of like a key where there's a potassium pump in between the cell walls. And okay. without that potassium key, the sodium can't go in between the cell walls to replenish itself. Mm -hmm. So when you have a super high sodium table salt that you're using, you're going to have swelling, you're going to have all these issues oh. because the sodium can't get into the cell walls where it needs to go. Oh, interesting. But if you have a salt that even if it has similar sodium content, but it also has potassium, that potassium pump can actually work and the sodium can go and hydrate the areas that need to go. Oh, so having the other minerals with it yes. can help the sodium to actually be more beneficial for your body. Right. Now there are some people with sodium sensitivities that obviously we do have salts for those people as really? well. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because that is a thing too, you know, uh -huh. everybody's different, just like your body reacts differently to caffeine or, or to dairy, you know, you yeah. need to listen to your own body. Yeah, yeah, so I'm curious, what salt do you use at home? Oh gosh. I'm sure you've got a plethora. <laughs> I do, my table's covered in salt with all these different jars and I, I you know, Right now, because I am pregnant, I am more on the higher um, potassium because my potassium level was so low. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you're yeah. using that to help supplement your right. body. Oh, right, right, okay. yeah. When you use it, are you just using a little bit and that's enough to give you potassium? Or cause I know when you take like a pill, there's a big right. amount of something in there, like yeah. a supplement. Right, I was still taking a pill because I was so low, but mm -hmm. I realize, okay, I'm going to not go with my magnesium, my high sodium salts, I'm going to go with my potassium ones, and I'll just oh. pinch it, and your tongue is a great tester. Mm -hmm. If something tastes good to you and it feels like satisfying, that's usually your body saying, I needed this. Mm, there are sure. some cases where it's extreme, you know, if you're going to eat a whole chocolate cake and <laughs> your body probably didn't need all that chocolate cake. But. You can overindulge. Right. <laughs> But when you eat something that's got just enough mm -hmm. of the seasoning on it, then that could be really helpful. Yeah, and a lot of the doctors, what they saw was um, people have this um, unquenchable, salty um, tooth where they mm. can't seem to get enough. But when they switch them to a high mineral sodium uh, sea salt uh, ratio, their salty tooth becomes a little more quenched because their body's finally getting the sodium where it needs to go in their body. Wow. It's really fascinating. So I wish there the, were more studies. They were done. lessening the amount of salt that they were intaking, but they were intaking the right type. Right, yeah. They finally felt that like satisfaction. Oh. Yeah. And this is just in people's practices where they contacted us and shared these stories, even yeah. in children. Oh, wow. I'm this. really curious to test that on myself, too, and trying with different things. And I mean, people around the world, my students can do that as right. well. Yeah. Especially if there's something that, like with the U.S., Morton salt is just the typical salt that you're right. probably going to find in a lot of typical places. The American salt. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of other countries have that kind of typical thing, right. too. But to try something that's actually been maybe more studied and right. has a lot of thought gone into it. Right. It would be interesting to feel that difference yourself. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious, when because this is your family's business, is everyone in your family involved in Celtic salt, <laughs> sea salt? <laughs> we have a huge family, so no. Okay. Um, there's only a handful of us that uh, are still involved. So you chose, I'm going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I went to culinary school, and mm -hmm. then it just kind of seemed to be a nice fit. And uh, yeah, it's just been a passion that we've all kind of shared for years. Nice. My sister's a Pilates instructor in New York, so she kind of went on her own thing, which is cool. Uh, yeah. But, um, I stayed here and just continued the the legacy. So. That's awesome. So when you were growing up, I'm sure that was something that was big in your family. Yeah. Did they also have a table of salt? Yeah. <laughs> oh, our whole family is, they're they're all about the salt. And <laughs> sure. They send us pictures, I'm at this grocery store, here it is, or I'm in this country, here oh, it is. Oh, that's so, so it's cool. Fun. How did you enjoy that conversation with Carla? Was it a little fast, a little tricky? Did you understand everything? I hope that it made you think about something, salt, <laughs> that we don't often think about. Next is a vocabulary lesson. You're going to see my husband Dan and I explaining some key expressions that you heard in that conversation with Carla. After our explanations, you're going to see a clip from the original conversation with Carla so that you can just remember the original context and use them yourself. All right, let's get started with the vocabulary lesson. The first expression that we're going to talk about today is the word sustainable. Ooh, sustainable. The typical way that we usually use this is to talk about the environment. Mm -hmm. And that's how Carly used it. She was talking about how different salt practices are sustainable for the environment or unsustainable for the environment. But there's mm -hmm. some other ways we can use this as well. How would you use the word sustainable? Sustainable, yeah. So I think today, primarily, I do think environmentally. Mm. And some people even just say sustainability. Mm. Like we have great sustainability in this country. Or mm. we're very unsustainable. I think most environment, environmentalists say that we're unsustainable mm. right now. But yeah, there's other ways you can use this. You can use it in certain situations that you don't think can continue. Mm. So maybe, you, for example, you're in a relationship with somebody mm. and you argue all the time. Somebody might yeah. be talking with you and saying, 
Yeah, I don't think your relationship is sustainable. I don't think it can keep on going. Oh, yeah, you can't continue at that in that same way for a long time,、mm -hmm. at least、uh, while still being happy. It's not、right. possible. And you can even use this to talk about your English practice.、Mm -hmm. If you say, "Okay, I'm going to make an English plan for myself. I'm going to study for five hours every day." Do you think that that's sustainable? No, no because. You have to have a life too. You have to eat and sleep and go to work and hopefully see some family and friends. It's not possible to continue doing that.、Mm -hmm. So you might say to yourself, "Okay, I need to create a sustainable English practice.、Ooh. What is something that I can continue on doing into the future? Maybe it's something simple, like, 'Okay, I'm going to listen to a couple minutes of this vocabulary lesson every day while I drive to work.'" Cool. Okay, I think that's pretty sustainable. You can continue doing that without too much stress to your personal environment. So, what we're going to do for each of these vocabulary words is we're going to also show you a clip from the conversation with Carla so that you can see how it was originally used, which is what we're going to do now. Let's watch the clip. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years,、mm -hmm. and it's still there today. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. The next expression is thought process, and this just means a way of thinking or thinking deeply about something. And I think we usually say this when you want to maybe question somebody,、mm -hmm. either if they did something wrong. Or if they're just doing something well and you want more details,、mm -hmm. for example,、um, maybe somebody is like a science student、mm -hmm. and they made they solved a problem that was really difficult. You could ask them, "What was your thought process when you went into this problem?、Mm -hmm. How did you think about it?"、Mm -hmm. And so, process means that you're going step by step. Yeah. How you did something,、yeah. so it's maybe you want to imitate、detail. what they did. Well,、mm -hmm. what was your thought process,、mm -hmm. so that I can imitate that in future experiments? Right. But on the other hand, if somebody did something wrong, you might say, some most people would probably say, "What were you thinking?" But you could also say, "What was your thought process here? Why did you do that?" Yeah, it's just another way to say, "Huh? Why in the world did you make this terrible decision?" <laughs> But、yeah. it's a little more indirect.、Mm -hmm. What were you thinking, or what was your thought process? Why did you think that driving the car down the street when it was icy <laughs> was a good idea? What was your thought process? And maybe you didn't have a thought process. Maybe you just did it. You didn't think about it. But it's maybe someone questioning. Your judgment. You can also use、mm. this to explain or defend yourself. So a common、mm. way to use this is to say, "My thought process was."、Mm -hmm. So let's see if I decide to save money, and I want to save a lot of money, and in the end, maybe I don't really save that much. <laughs> But someone might ask you, "Why are you trying to save money?" If I say, "Oh, I can't go out、mm -hmm. to eat. I'm, I'm doing other stuff." And I might say, well, my thought process was, if I save enough money, then I can replace my car because our car is getting old or it's breaking down a lot. So I'm just kind of explaining why I'm doing something. Why、mm -hmm. am I saving money? Well, my thought process was,、mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I want to. Hopefully, buy a different car in the future. So you can use it to defend yourself.、Right. Why are you doing this? Oh, I, my thought process was this. Please understand. So you can use it in both ways, as a question or as a defense.、Mm -hmm. All right, let's watch the clips so you can see how it was used. It's incredible that they had the thought process to say we need to save wood. Let's use what、right. we've got. Nature,、right. the sun. It's incredible that they had the thought process to say we need to save wood. Let's use what、right. we've got. It's incredible that they had the thought process to say we need to save wood. Let's use what、right. we've got. The next expression is to tackle. <laughs> yeah, have you ever watched <laughs> rugby or American football?、Mm -hmm. The players will just slam into each other and kind of like wrestling, push、yeah. each other down. It literally means to grab and throw somebody down, but you you go down with them. Yeah,、right? so you are tackling someone. This is、mm. the literal definition of to tackle.、Mm -hmm. But is that how Carla used it? <laughs> no. So yeah, there's a figurative way that we use this that is probably more common. Yeah, and it's just all the time. Yeah, it just means to do something that's really difficult and big,、mm. maybe too big even.、Mm. For example, if you say, "I'm going to learn 1,000 words tonight." Oh. <laughs> 
You're probably tackling too much. Yeah, if you say I'm gonna tackle these verbs mm -hmm. or I'm gonna tackle some big problem, just like the American football example with your physically taking down a big person, that's a that's a big task. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible, but it's just a big task. Mm -hmm. So maybe this year, at the beginning of the year, you decided you had a couple goals for yourself. I'm gonna tackle my fear of public speaking. Mm. Ooh, so maybe you're gonna join a public speaking organization and just practice public speaking each month, or you're gonna do something actively to try to overcome some difficulty. Oh, that's a lot to tackle, right. but you can do it. Yeah, it's kind of used as like a, a confidence boost, mm. and some people just say. It's a lot to tackle, mm. but I think I can do it, mm. right? So you just put it in this one catchphrase. It's a lot to tackle. Yeah, so learning all of these verbs is a lot to tackle, but I think I can do it. Mm. So I hope for you that all of the vocabulary from this lesson, even though it's a lot to tackle, over the whole month, you can do it. Study little by little, keep practicing. You can tackle it. You can do it. <laughs> all right, let's watch the clip. Oh. They've lifted that sense, but it's a huge investment to as you can imagine, to tackle yeah. that kind of distribution. And we're still a family-owned company. We've never had investors. Everything has wow. been grassroots grown, but it's a huge investment to, as you can imagine, to tackle yeah. that kind of distribution. But it's a huge investment to, as you can imagine, to tackle yeah. that kind of distribution. The next expression is on top of. And this can mean, as it literally sounds, you're on the top of something or at the greatest point. For example, I'm on top of the world! Mm. Oh, well, people say that figuratively, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it means that you're the best person ever if you say, I'm on top of the world. You or, might be on top of Mount Everest, though. In this case, oh, you are literally on top of that's the world. True. Oh. But you may also say to your child, uh, don't stand on top of the table. Mm, right? Okay. Don't stand on the top of it. So this is literal. But we also use this to mean in addition to. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of homework and on top of that I also have a part-time job <laughs> yeah I also have to work tonight right so mm. this plus this and we would say that if it's we're already kind of overwhelmed or mm. we already have something big then you're gonna say I have this on top of this other thing yeah it's usually adding responsibility mm -hmm. so it's not really it can be used in a positive way like Oh, he's such a great guy, and on top of that, he's really handsome. You can use it in that positive way, but I feel like it's used negatively more often. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that sounded all right, what you said. Yeah, it's natural, but I feel like but we tend to use this in a more negative way. Certainly, if you have a lot going on, that, that's usually the situation. You have a lot going on, and on top of that, you have other things. Yes, a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. What if I said... I was really on top of my game last yeah. night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're really on top of your game. That means mm. that you're playing the best or doing the best that you possibly can. Mm -hmm. You're on top of your game. You can also just say, I'm on top of it. Yes. Meaning that you're on it, you're doing it. You're doing the best you're you can. You're staying current. So maybe mm -hmm. if your boss says, How's the project going? Is it going to be done by 4 p.m. today? You could say, yep, I'm on top of it. Yeah, and you can kind of picture like literally standing or sitting on yeah. this thing, right? You are conquering it. You are it. conquering <laughs> it. You're on top of it. Yeah, I think that's a common expression to say, don't worry, I got it. I'm, I'm not falling behind. I'm not procrastinating. Mm -hmm. I'm on top of it. Mm -hmm. And that could even be a personality trait too. Like she is always on top of it. She always knows what's going on and... She she doesn't forget little things. This is mm. kind of a A-type personality. She's always on top of it. And it means life. Yeah. Or on top of things. <laughs> on top of things. Yes, mm -hmm. that could be different things that are going on in her life. Because we talked about a couple different ways to use this, like standing on top of the world, a mountain, to be on top of something, or one thing on top of another, kind mm -hmm. of building this responsibility, I recommend checking out the lesson guide so that you can just visually see each of those sentences. It's going to help you to remember them, but also hopefully be able to use them yourself. That's the goal. I hope so. All right, let's watch the clips so you can see how I used this wonderful expression to talk about salt. <laughs> let's watch. Okay. The bleaching caused it to be bitter, so they had to sweeten it, so they added dextrose, which caused it to be sticky so it wouldn't shake out of the jar, so they added anti-caking agent chemicals. One thing on top of another. One thing on top of another. One thing on top of another. 
The next expression is to come to terms with something. There's a、mm. lot of words in this expression, but to come to terms with something means you're accepting something that is maybe emotionally difficult. And I、mm. feel like we we have to do this a lot in life in order to live somewhat satisfied. You have to come to terms with. Difficult things in your life, and then move on.、Mm-hmm. So, what is something for you that you've come to terms、yeah. with? I have a, lived. <laughs> I have a personal example.、Okay. So, some of you might、uh, have struggles with body image.、Uh, I will say that it wasn't a huge struggle for me, but w- in puberty, I realized that I'm a really skinny guy,、mm-hmm. right? So that used to bother me. I kind of wanted to be bigger. And stronger,、mm. but I had to come to terms with the fact that I will never be a buff guy.、Mm. I will never be very big or strong. I'm、mm. just a skinny guy,、mm. and I've come to terms with that. I came to terms with it a long time ago. It doesn't bother me anymore. I've embraced、mm. it. One may say <laughs> I wear skinny jeans and a skinny shirt, and I just say. Look at me! I'm a skinny guy, and I like it. So you have really come to terms with it, <laughs> <laughs> but this is something that maybe for you in puberty, as you're kind of learning about yourself and your body's changing, you、yeah. feel. I used to hate it. Yeah, it's a difficult thing, and then you realized, okay, this is just who I am.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially, I think this might have been a difficult thing for you because your brother is like twice. He's huge. He's like twice as big as you are. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's like a big, like. Football player kind of guy,、mm-hmm. so it's kind of the opposite of your body type.、Yeah. So maybe growing <laughs> up, you had to really come to terms with the fact that you're different from your brother and just a different kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, it was mostly probably just thinking about with the ladies, honestly. Like,、mm. well, well, they think I'm just too scrawny.、Was、scrawny it, is like the really bad word for skinny. It's not a bad word as in a curse well, word, but、yeah. it just feels really negative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did it work out for you with the ladies? It worked out. <laughs> okay. <in the> end. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, I'm curious. What is something that for you you have needed to come to terms with? You、mm-hmm. might have noticed that in Dan's sentence, in his example, he said, "Come to terms with the fact that."、Mm-hmm. So here he's stating that it's a fact. I'm a skinny guy. This is something I can't change. Or you might say, "Well, I just need to come to terms with the fact that my native language of Japanese is completely different than English. I can't change that." But I'm still gonna try my best to learn English.、Mm-hmm. So it is a fact that Japanese and English are way different. We don't really share any grammar or any vocabulary. But your native language is Japanese. You can't change that. So you could say, I need to come to terms with the fact that English is a little bit more challenging、mm-hmm. for me because of my native language. But I'm not gonna let it stop me. I'm not gonna let it hold me back. I'm gonna push on. Yeah. This is something that's. Maybe a little difficult, but you are going to embrace it、mm-hmm. and continue on in life. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's watch the clips. You can see how this wonderful expression was used. What we have kind of come to terms with is we've realized, you know, the salt is actually perfect in its own way. What we have kind of come to terms with is we've realized, you know, the salt is actually perfect in its own way. What we have kind of come to terms with is we've realized, you know, the salt is actually perfect in its own way. The next expression is side by side. Hey. We're sitting side by side right、We、now. We are. <laughs> yeah. So this just means next to each other,、mm-hmm. and、um, so you could use this in a kind of comparative way,、mm-hmm. like Carla said in the conversation. So when you try the salts side by side, meaning right、mm-hmm. next to each other, w- one after another,、mm-hmm. then you'll be able to tell a difference. Yeah. So this is a, a little more complex way to use side by side. I feel like whenever someone asks me specifically about. A small difference in something. I、yeah. often use this expression. Well, I need to hear them side by side,、mm, or、yeah. I need to taste them side by side. So, for example,、uh, we watch some Miyazaki movies. This、mm. is a Japanese animator who makes some great movies for kids, but also for adults. And there are some different English. Translations、mm-hmm. of those movies. Yeah, there's a couple versions. Yeah, there's some debate about what's better. There's some debate about which one is best. So we thought, oh, maybe we should buy the DVD of those movies so that we can continue to watch them instead of trying to find them online every single time we want to watch them.、Mm-hmm. And then we thought, well, which version should we get? There's different versions in English. Which one should we get? And then I said, well, I don't really hear a difference unless. I listen to them side by side. Yeah, I think both are great. Both versions in English are great, 
but I can't hear the difference unless I hear them side by side. So yeah. this means directly one after another. The same sentence, then the same sentence. Yeah, Otherwise, you, it sounds the same. <laughs> yeah, and you may even say, I need a side by side comparison mm. to use it as an adjective like that. Yeah. But we also use the side by side maybe as a uh, camaraderie expression. Mm. So if you're together in something, right, we walked side by side into the difficult situation. Oh. Um, I don't feel like it's super common You anymore. might hear that, though. It kind of means that you are together. But it we does, are struggling with this together. Right. We're doing this side by side. We're together in this. Yeah, yeah, you mm -hmm. could use it like that. And it could also just mean as simple as what Dan said at the very beginning. We are sitting side by side <laughs> on the couch. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's something very literal and That's very fact. simple. <laughs> All right, let's watch the clips so that you can see how we used side by side to talk about tasting different salts. Once you start to taste different salts side by side, you'll start to go, oh wow, I can taste that this one's a little more bitter. Once you start to taste different salts side by side, you'll start to go, oh wow, I can taste that this one's a little more bitter. Once you start to taste different salts side by side, you'll start to go, oh wow, I can taste that this one's a little more bitter. The next expression is to be all about something. All about. Yeah. So. In the conversation, Carla was saying that her family is all about salt. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, that means that they like very intensely salt. Yes. <laughs> her family's been involved in the salt business for a long time, yeah. so she could say, we are all about salt. And they know all about salt. Mm. They know every, almost everything about it. Yeah, yeah. So they are deeply involved in that. They like mm. it a lot. We're all about salt. If you like something a lot, maybe if you like English a lot, you could say, yeah, I'm all about English. Every mm. moment of every day, that's what I think about. I'm all about English. But it could also be to talk about a main reason for something. Mm. So how would you use this if you were going to use it to talk about a main reason? The main reason. reason? Yeah. Well, what comes to mind for me, mm. obviously, is hockey. Okay. <laughs> because I love hockey. So hockey is all about skating. Oh. Or being good at hockey is all about skating. Mm. Can you skate well? So this mm. is the primary factor the thing you need to know more than anything else or the thing you need to be able to do mm. more than anything else. So you could yeah. say, yeah, being good at hockey is all about skating. Mm, I would say the same thing about starting a business. Starting a business. It's all about skating? It's not all about skating. That would be pretty fun though. Maybe a hockey business. <laughs> but starting a business is all about dedication. Mm. If you are willing to dedicate your time and your energy, then you're probably going to succeed. It's all about <laughs> diligence. Yeah, that's a really important factor is diligence and dedication. Mm -hmm. So starting a business is all about dedication. Yes, mm -hmm. you need good ideas. You need to be probably good at what you're doing. But if you're not dedicated, it's not going to work. Yeah, and this is an exaggeration. So it's <laughs> not literally mm -hmm. all about this. You need to know other things too. But yeah. if you really want to emphasize the most important thing, then you'll say all about. Yes, it is all about dedication. It is all about skating. Or you could just say, I'm all about English, and it yeah. means that you like English a lot. <laughs> yeah, you always, you love it, you want to study all the time. Mm. Yeah, that's probably you, right? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> all right, let's watch the clip so that you can see how this was used. <laughs> Our whole family is, they're they are all about the salt. And <laughs> sure. They send us pictures, I'm at this grocery store, here it is, or I'm in this country, here oh, it is. Oh, that's so, so cool. <laughs> oh, our whole family is, they're they are all about the salt. <laughs> Our whole family is, they are they're all about the salt. How did you enjoy that vocabulary lesson? I hope it was useful and enjoyable for you. Next, it's time for a grammar lesson where we're gonna focus on some important phrasal verbs that you heard in the original conversation with Carla. Phrasal verbs are an essential key to English sentences to help you sound natural. So I hope that the phrasal verbs we talk about in this lesson will help you to expand what you can say and also to understand native speakers better. All right, let's get started. The first phrasal verb that we're going to talk about is to use up. Mm. And when we use something, you're just, you know, making use of it. But what is use up? Is it putting it up high? No, that <laughs> means you have finished something. Completely. Or you used something completely. Mm -hmm. And we often use this for things in the kitchen. Mm. For example, we eat a lot of oatmeal, mm -hmm. therefore we have used up the oatmeal. Uh -huh. Or if somebody's looking for something in the kitchen, mm. they might say, where's the oatmeal? Where's the flour? Where's mm. the milk? Mm. And you could say, oh, I'm sorry, I used up all the milk. Mm. Or we could split this phrasal verb and say, 
I used it up. Mm -hmm. Because we already know that we're talking about milk, <laughs> so we can just replace the word milk with it. Oh, sorry, I used it up when I was making some hot chocolate last night or when mm -hmm. I was doing something else. I used it up or I used up the milk. It's completely gone. But we can also use this a little bit more figuratively. Yeah, people do use it figuratively mm -hmm. sometimes. Maybe they say... I've used up my energy. Mm. <laughs> well, if you're awake, you probably still have energy. But if you're just really tired, you mm. could say, I've used up my energy. Yeah, I'm or, completely oh, ready to rest. <laughs> yeah, and perhaps somebody will say, I've used up my patience. Oh, mm. okay. That means that you're not going to wait for somebody anymore. <laughs> or sometimes if you, if you have a child, <laughs> they may be, oh, our kid does this all the time, just trying to distract you and do one more thing mm -hmm. and just keep on doing what he's doing and not listening well you could say all right i've used up all my patience or i've used up my patience let's do this let's it's go it's time to go to bed now <laughs> yeah you might use this if you're a teacher you might say oh today was such a hard day i used up all my patience and i'm ready to go home mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can use up something that's a little bit more figurative like patience energy or you can also use up money like if you are saving to buy maybe uh, a new car and then you buy the car you can say well i used up all my savings to buy the car mm -hmm. so your savings is completely gone your savings account is at zero or you know figuratively maybe close to zero mm -hmm. and you've used up that money Instead of boiling the water and boiling to, to evaporate it and, and using up all the valuable wood that they needed for other things back then, they realized that they needed to create these ponds using these clay beds and using up all the valuable wood that they needed for other things back then and using up all the valuable wood that they needed for other things back then. The next phrasal verb is to come from. Hmm. And here we're talking about originating at some destination but mm -hmm. I want to let you know that we do not use this to talk about your country if someone says oh where are you from if you said I come from Brazil it mm -hmm. feels really weird it's kind of like you're a package sounds, that's being mailed from yeah, Brazil <laughs> it sounds too impersonal or like the, a real origin like I was born in Brazil right Bra Brazil made me yeah it's kind of got a weird feel to it you might hear this in really really formal situations mm -hmm. but I just want to let you know up front that we don't talk about this specifically for your home country but there's a lot of other ways that we can talk about come from for people or for items so yeah. what do you think is a main way that we use to come from? So I think somebody might use this in a question a lot mm -hmm. if they don't know where something came from. Mm -hmm. So if there's something in your house that you don't know where it's from, mm -hmm. you'll, you might ask, where did this come from? Yeah. And then Vanessa might say, oh, it came from Target, mm -hmm. for example. It came from Amazon. Yeah, it <laughs> came from Amazon. The most likely situation. Yes. So if you're... Uh, walking in someone's house that you haven't been in before and they have a really cool statue or really cool painting you could say oh that's really cool where did that come from mm -hmm. and you can use it in that questioning situation where did it come from but we can also use this for mm, maybe for defending yourself as mm -hmm. well like I don't know where it came from if uh, this is kind of the classic teenage situation but if your mom goes into your bedroom and she smells weed for example <laughs> which is marijuana so if she smells that and she's like what is that smell you're like oh mom i don't know where that smell came from you're kind of defending yourself sure. like, it wasn't me <laughs> so you might say i don't know where it came from mm -hmm. and this is a vague sense we're not talking specifically or about the destination say, where'd that come from well where'd that come from I, my friend must have put that in my bag i didn't <laughs> even know where did that come from so we often use it in those kind of vague situations mm -hmm. where did that come from i don't know where it came from and actually people use that question if they're really surprised about <laughs> something somebody said <laughs> if some if you say something really rude oh. or mean you might ask, where'd that come from? Oh, so this is kind of the figurative sense yeah, a little more of using figurative. it. If someone is, you know, pretty positive and you're having a good conversation, then all of a sudden they say, oh, it's so terrible, blah, blah, blah. And they feel really frustrated right, right instantly. Yeah. You might say, whoa, where did that frustration come from? Mm. So it's like, where did your frustration originate from? Because all of a sudden 
he just kind of felt frustrated. It seemed kind of yeah. weird that that just happened. But so, you, would, you would always ask, where did that come from? Yeah, whoa, where'd that come from? That mm -hmm. means that statement or that feeling mm -hmm. that you're expressing. But there is another figurative way that yes. we can use this that is often used, quite interesting. Yes, you <laughs> need to see where I'm coming from. Oh, yes. Or can't you see where I'm coming from? What does this mean? Can't you see where I'm coming from? Does it mean my, my home? I'm coming no. from my home? <laughs> it means your point of view mm -hmm. or your perspective or yes. your opinion. So if you say this to somebody, you're basically telling them that they're only thinking about themselves, mm -hmm. only thinking about their feelings. Yeah. So if you say, uh, you need to see where I'm coming from, mm. that kind of reminds them that you have an opinion or a oh. feeling in this situation. I know I've used that in discussions or arguments with Dan before. Oh, really? <laughs> where I've said, oh, can't you see where I'm coming from? Just to, <laughs> just to you know, put in perspective it's that... It's probably a common female refrain. Maybe just pl <laughs> please see it from my perspective. And it's not necessarily rude. It's just saying okay, please look at it from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Can't you see where I'm coming from? Or don't you see where I'm coming from? You're asking them to say, okay, I understand why you have that point of view. Maybe I don't agree with it, but I understand. So mm -hmm. this could be, you know, if you are, uh, for example, maybe if you don't agree with something that your parents say and you feel like, oh, their generation is so different. <laughs> you might think to yourself, well, I understand where they're coming from. Right, yeah. I understand their point of view because of the way they grew up, because of their parents, because the world was very different back then. So I understand where they're coming from. I understand their point of view. That's mm -hmm. kind of the origin of their thoughts. This is a lovely phrasal verb with many different meanings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you'll see all different colors and all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. And all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. And all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. The next phrasal verb is to start off or to start off mm. with something. And you can imagine the verb to start is the beginning. But when we use to start off with, we usually are talking about the beginning of some kind of series of events. Mm -hmm. So multiple things are happening afterwards. For example, if I said, oh man, I, I want to make bread, but I don't know how to make bread. If Dan is a bread expert, mm -hmm. he might yeah. say, well, <laughs> to start off with, you need to... Have a good Toss recipe. Toss the flour into the air. Oh wow, you're really an expert. That's the magical <laughs> part. Just throw flour in the air and it just comes down like a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Magic. So we're saying to start off with, you need to do this. We're using mm. that phrasal verb kind of as an introduction to the series. To start off with, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. And here's kind of the things that you need to do. Yeah, I think you use this usually when you're introducing something mm -hmm. or if you're giving instructions. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving instructions, you might tell the other person, well, we need to start off with this mm. or you if you start off with a good recipe then mm. get the ingredients then have a lot of time <laughs> right or if you are um, maybe making a presentation mm. you might say we're gonna start off today with a we're gonna start off today with a little bit of a story mm. for example yeah so you could use it to begin something that's gonna have several other events or activities that happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. So in Dan's sentence, he said, I'm starting the meeting by saying, uh, we're going to start off today mm -hmm. with something. I wanna let you know that you're, you're also gonna hear the word by. We're gonna start off today by mm -hmm. telling a joke. We're gonna start off today with telling a joke. You could use either, you're gonna hear both of those, but the main part, start off with, or start off is going to be the same for all of these. And the key with salt tasting is you want to start off with the highest mineral content salt going to the highest sodium salt. You want to start off with the highest mineral content salt. You want to start off with the highest mineral content salt. Were any of those phrasal verbs new to you? I hope that our explanations help you to remember them and learn how to use them in real conversations. Next, it's time for a pronunciation lesson. We're going to take an in-depth look at a couple sentences that you heard in the original conversation. I'm going to break those down step by step so that you can imitate our pronunciation. So what I want you to do is I want you to try to repeat with me, speak out loud, use your pronunciation muscles 
It's great to hear me, but it's even better if you speak out loud yourself. So I challenge you to be active and let's get started. Hi, welcome to this month's pronunciation lesson. Today we're going to be focusing on five sentences that you heard in the conversation with Carla, and each of those sentences features a vocabulary expression or a phrasal verb that we talked about in the previous lessons. So I hope that this will help you to remember those words and pronounce them correctly. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the clip, and then I'm going to help you break down the sentence so that you can say it exactly the way that we did. And then we're going to watch it again. I hope that your understanding will improve, but also your pronunciation skills. All right, let's start with the first sentence. So this started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and it's still there today. Wow. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. In this sentence, you heard Carla say, this started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. She's talking about the method of creating salt instead of burning wood. They're using the sun to evaporate the water. And this is a sustainable process. The sun is always going to be hot, so it's easy to evaporate with the sun. And it's sustainable for the earth as well. So let's break down the sentence starting at the beginning. In the beginning of the sentence, she says, this started, started. This ed word started ends in an id sound. Started. But what's another sound that you hear? The word start ends in a t, but this t is changing to a d. This is super typical in American English that T's change to D sounds. So I want you to say this with me. This started. It kind of sounds like star plus did. Started. This started. This started. I want you to be as active as possible during this lesson. So whenever I'm saying something and I'm repeating something a couple times, I hope that you can say it out loud too. It's great to listen to my voice, but it's even better if you can say it out loud yourself. All right, let's go to the next part of the sentence. A very sustainable practice. A very sustainable practice. Let's break down that big word here. Sustainable. That final part sounds like a. Uh. Sustainable. There's two uh sounds here at the beginning. Sustainable. So I want you to say that part with me. A very sustainable practice. A very sustainable practice. In the next two words, she says, that has, that has. First, let's listen for the vowel sound. That, eh, eh. It's a short E. Even though the word that has an A, that, often in fast English, it becomes the, eh, eh, that has, that has, that has. But what's happening to the final T in that word? That. Do you hear it at all? That has. This is called a stopped T. So instead of making that T sound with a puff of air, your tongue's going to stop at the top of your mouth. That has, that has. You're making a T sound, you're just not letting that puff of air escape. That has, that has, and then she says, lasted hundreds of years. Lasted. Ooh, does that sound familiar? It's similar to started. We have lasted. So just think L-A-S, las, plus did, D-I-D. -I -D. Lasted. Lasted hundreds of years. Lasted hundreds of years. So both past tense verbs, started, lasted, have the same type of pronunciation. The T is changing to a D, and that final ED ending is going to sound like id. Started, lasted. Do you think we can put this all together? Let's go back and take a look at this full sentence, try to remember all those things we talked about, and we're going to see which words are emphasized so that you can have the right cadence and rhythm in this sentence. This started a very sustainable practice 
that has lasted hundreds of years. She's emphasizing started. This started a very sustainable practice. Emphasizing both of those words that has lasted hundreds of years. She also emphasizes the word hundreds because that's the unimportant part of this sentence. How many years? Hundreds of years. Let's go back and try to say this sentence by emphasizing those important words. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. You want to say it with me? This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. All right, it's your turn. I'm going to pause. No matter where you live around the world, I'll be listening, so make sure that you say this out loud with all of the correct pronunciation that we talked about. If you need a reminder, you can always check out the lesson guide. Each month I send a monthly lesson guide. This is like a mini textbook, and you can see all of the words that we've talked about and see how they're pronounced, and that will kind of give you a, a good reminder as you're practicing this lesson. All right, it's your turn. Say the sentence all by yourself. Great work. Let's listen to how Carla said it in the original conversation. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. This started a very sustainable practice that has lasted hundreds of years. Did you hear those ED words started, lasted? I hope so. Let's go on to the second sentence where you're going to hear the phrasal verb to come from. Let's listen. But you'll see all different colors, and all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. Um, okay. We even have a super white, white salt from Hawaii. All those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. All those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. In this sentence, Carla said, all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from different regions. Do you hear a word that she repeats three times? She says come from twice, but she also says different three times. So today, this is your chance to master pronouncing this word. Let's go back to the beginning and try to say this a little bit by little bit together. All those different colors. This is the first time that we've encountered the word different in this sentence. So let's say it slowly and together. Diff Rin. Diff with a clear F sound. Your top teeth are on your bottom lip. Diff. And then we have rin. Rin. It kind of sounds like R I N, but we need to have a stopped T at the end. Diff rin. That means that your tongue is stopped at the top of your mouth. You're going to say different, but you don't let that little final puff of air come out. So we need to say different. Your tongue is stopped at the top of your mouth. Different, different. All those different colors. Can you say that with me? All those different colors. All those different colors. All those different colors come from different mineral compositions. <laughs> Let's say that word again. Come from different mineral compositions come from different mineral compositions coming from different regions this word hasn't changed at all all three times that we say it it's going to be the same pronunciation helpful great so let's say that final part again coming from different regions coming from different different regions. Great work. Let's go back and say this full sentence together and try to emphasize the important words. A good thing to remember is that the word directly after different is going to be emphasized in this whole sentence. So we can say all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from different regions. So we have colors, mineral compositions, and regions. Let's try to say it together. All those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from different regions. Let's speed it up. 
all those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from different regions. This is a great way to practice the word different a lot and also the word come from. I think this phrasal verb is repeated enough that hopefully you'll remember it after this lesson. All right, I'm going to pause and I want you to say this all together. Make sure that you say different and also that you emphasize those correct words. Go ahead. Great work. Let's listen to her repeat the word different a lot. All those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. All those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. All those different colors come from different mineral compositions coming from the, the different regions. Did you hear different, different, different? I hope so. Let's go on to the third sentence where you're going to hear the expression to be all about. Let's listen. <laughs> oh, our whole family is, they're, they're all about the salt. And <laughs> sure. They send us pictures, I'm at this grocery store, here it is, or I'm in this country, here oh, it is. That's so, so it's cool. Fun. <laughs> oh, our whole family is, they're, they're all about the salt. And, oh, our whole family is, they're, they're all about the salt. And, <laughs> this is actually two sentences, and I just decided to add them together. She said, our whole family is, they're all about the salt. Let's break this down. It seems like a short sentence, but there's a lot going on. At the beginning of this sentence, she says, our whole family is, our whole family is, our. How is she pronouncing O-U-R? R, R. Does that sound like the letter R? Yup, it is the same pronunciation. When we say our, our, with this slower, clearer pronunciation, our whole family is, our, it's going to be for more slower conversations, a little bit more intentional. But in fast conversations, we just say our. Our whole family is. Our, our. So I want you to say that with me. Our whole family is. Our whole family is. And that final word, is, is, is going to have a Z sound at the end. So try to say that with me. Our whole family is. 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 Let's go on to the next part. They're all about the salt. They're all about the salt. Let's start with the first word. There. There. This is a contraction of they plus are. But she doesn't say they're. There, this is the clear pronunciation for this contraction. In fast conversations, native speakers are just going to say there, there. It kind of sounds like look over there, he's over there, T H E R E. So you can kind of imagine that the Y is just gone. <laughs> you can say there, 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 all about the soul, there, there. In the next part, she uses the key expression here, all about the salt. Listen for the final T on those two words that end in T. They're all about the salt. They're all about the salt. Do you hear the T? They're all about the salt? No. Instead, this is going to be that stopped T sound. So I want your tongue on the roof of your mouth stopping at the end of that word. They're all about the salt. 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 If you just say sol, it's a different sound than salt with a stop T. If you just say S-O-L compared to S-O-L, sol, sol, with a stop T, or it's pronounced, or it's spelled S-A-L-T, but the pronunciation is kind of like an O, that's why I said that. But you can say salt with a stop T and it's going to sound much more natural. Do you think we can put that final sentence together? They're all about the salt. Say it with me. They're all about the salt. They're all about the salt. Okay, let's go back and try to say all of this together, including the first part. Let's say it and emphasize the right words. Our whole family is. They're all about the salt. Our whole family is. They're all about the salt. Can you guess what we're emphasizing here? Our whole 
family is. They're all about the salt. So we have whole family, all, and salt. Let's say this all together. Remember all of the reductions that we talked about and also these emphasized words. Say it with me. Our whole family is. They're all about the salt. Our whole family is. They're all about the salt. Our whole family is. They're all about the salt. Now it's your turn. Say it all by yourself. Go ahead. Great work. All right, let's listen to this sentence and I want you to listen for all of those things that we talked about, those reductions, the stop tease. Let's listen. <laughs> oh, our whole family is, they're, they're all about the salt. <laughs> oh, our whole family is, they're, they're all about the salt. <laughs> oh, our whole family is, they're, they're all about the salt. Are your pronunciation muscles warmed up? I hope so. Along with the conversation, vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation lessons, you also get access to the MP3 versions of all of these lessons so that you can download them, listen to them while you're driving, while you're running, while you're cooking breakfast, and also the full transcript so that you can follow along and try to catch every single word. There's one more element to the Fearless Fluency Club that you get every month, and that is the story. Let's take a look at it. The story is a fun one-page combination of everything you studied this month. Vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, the topic, Everything is combined in this story. You can listen to it, repeat it, and even memorize it. I also host weekly live lessons in our private Facebook group so that you can ask me questions and practice what you've been learning each week. A lot of members also choose to speak together each week or even daily sometimes on Skype, Google Hangouts, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. This is a great way to make friends around the world and also to use English actively. If you'd like to join me and other members around the world in the Fearless Fluency Club, you can check out the link up here or in the description. And now I have a question for you. Because we talked about salt today and this is added to your food, I want to know what kind of food do you like to eat? Let me know in the comments. I hope if you're reading the comments, you're not too hungry because I'm sure there will be amazing dishes that you mention. Thanks so much for learning English with me and I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.